Hi, welcome to some Pincushion Ideas with Gourmet Quilter. I'm Susan Clare, the Gourmet Quilter. We're running uh, 20 ideas for pincushions in 20 days, basically. So we're doing one a day for 20 days and we're up to day eight or pincushion number eight. So we're having a wonderful time. Uh, they're all a little bit different, there's some different techniques, etc, etc. So there is a pattern that you can purchase on GourmetQuilter.com and if you do that you're going to have something like this to download and print which has got all the information you need. So this is a larger pin cushion that we're making today. It's a triangle. It's kind of like a pyramid type triangle, um, only that pyramids, if you think of the real pyramids that are in Egypt, they have actually four faces. This one has three and a bottom. So we need to, uh, to cut these out so they're equilateral triangles. This is in fact, I believe, a regular tetrahedron shape. Um, the cameraman in the pickle knows these things. So I've gone ahead and made all that up um, and I've gone got some other bits prepared. So for this we need to have a, a piece of fabric. Again, I'm going to use the crushed walnut shell to go in it. And so I'm going to put a little piece of uh, a fairly thin batting behind my fabric. So I have pre-quilted, so I'm suggesting that this be pre-quilted if you're going to do the same sort of thing that I've done. So I've pre-quilted my piece here. So we needed just a few pieces of fabric to make this one. And so a largish piece that I have gone ahead, this one I have free motion quilted. I've done a, just a meander over this one. I thought on the one today I'd make it with just some straight line quilting. So they're approximately half an inch apart, my line. So I went over... What I did was I went every inch across and then I came back and filled in the gaps. Um, I find that an easier way to do things like that. And, and it's just a piece of fabric with batting and some quilting on it. And then we need to have something if we're going to make a loop. Now you could use a cord. I'm going to use a piece of fabric. And we've got these little clippy uh, places. Because a lot of us are using clips now, nowadays as well as the pins or sometimes instead of. So there's somewhere to put your clips on there. There's a pocket here that you can keep scissors, needle, packets, all sorts of other things in. And then this face here is just left as a pin cushion. And I find that a really handy sort of shape. So we just need some fabric to line our pocket. So a little bit piece there and also to make the strips. Now the strips for the clips could also be all different colours. You don't have to just use one colour as I am. There's lots of options. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I've done all the quilting already because I didn't think you needed to see me just do some straight lines and I've got my pattern piece here so in the pattern comes the shape I'll get organized now so the pattern piece is the shape that we're cutting now there's quite a lot of information on this pattern piece we've got heights because we're going to cut the pocket from one of the pieces we're going to cut for the pocket lining as well um, we've got some other uh, dashed lines on here because that's going to be to show us where we place um, as strips for the clips. So lots of information there and it's also the shape that we are going to use to cut. So you may have, it's a 60 degree triangle being an equilateral one, you may have a, a template at home but if not then you may just want to use this template to cut around. So I'm just going to position this onto my fabric and I'm going to cut around it as my template. So I can just lay it there. If you're not sure it's going to sit still you could pop a little piece of sticky tape or something just to hold it temporarily. And then we just need to cut out that shape. And we need to cut it out five times. So you should be able to get that out of this piece of fabric without any trouble. Um, and I'm suggesting not cutting right through there when I cut that one up there because we'll be able to position this one around this way as well so that we're making full use of it. If we cut through there, you'd find that you'd have to come across and etc, etc. So I've already just now cut those that little shape. We need to cut the bottom edge as well. It's got three sides, this triangle. So that's the shape we're after. So I can go ahead and cut the rest of them. As I said, we're going to top and tail them. You can even lay that one against that line if you want to. We need to have five all together because we've got three sides, we've got a base, and then we've got the one that we cut down for the pocket. So I'll go ahead and get those cut out and show you how we go ahead with the next bit. So I've gone ahead and I've cut out my five um, triangles, quite exciting they are, and, and I've got plenty left over so there was 
a good amount of fabric there for that. And now we just need to cut one of them down to make our pocket. Now there's a line there and it's got a measurement on it or you could fold the template down and position that on there and cut it. It's really kind of up to you on that particular subject. I'm just going to use my ruler and cut the measurement. And we don't need that top piece now. So this is my pocket piece. I've already gone ahead and cut my lining piece. So what I need to do now is just put that to there and flip. we're going to flip that over so that we've got a nice little bound edge on the top there. So I'll go ahead and sew that. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that right sides together along that top edge which is the shorter edge of the two longer edges of the triangle. So we're just using a quarter inch seam here. We've done this before, we've made other pockets. Just press that over and then we're going to press that so we've pressed the seam up we're going to press that down now letting that stand up so that we've got a nice little bound edge on our pocket there and then I would suggest that we just come along and stitch in the ditch underneath that seam there where the little bit of binding is sitting just to give it a nice finish And we've made our pocket already. So now I'd suggest that we just trim away the excess of the pocket lining fabric so that it's sitting nicely and we can just place that onto one of our sides. It's going to be one of those sides and it can just sit there. You could do a little holding stitch if you wanted to just to hold it in place but I'm just going to leave mine sit there for the moment. So now I'd suggest because one of the sides is going to be um, just left quilted because we're going to use that for our pins. So now we need to make these little flaps here and these are not particularly hard. So I've got a strip of fabric here and I've got a strip of batting. Just again a fairly thin batting. So I folded my strip in half and I'm going to put, position the batting inside against the fold so that we're going to be doing some stitching because these just have a little bit of a thin batting and a little bit of quilting on them. So I'm just going to press that in there so that everything is sitting nicely for when I want to sew on it. So have the batting sitting in at the fold so the raw edges have got no batting immediately at them. And that's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to suggest that we just do say three lines of stitching all the way along this one piece because then we'll cut it down into shorter lengths. I think that's all looking pretty good. So I'm going to stitch along now um, an eighth of an inch from the fold and then two more lines about a quarter of an inch away from that one there and then leave this edge at the moment because we'll be using that to join. So I'll go ahead and get my stitching done on there um, and then I'll come and show you how we attach them. So I've done my three rows of stitching along my long strip that I had but I've cut it into to three different lengths now because we just need a, a shorter one for the top here, then a middle size one for the middle and a longer one for the lower one. So on the, on the pattern piece I mentioned earlier there's some markings for where we position uh, these pieces. So we're going to position it so if there's a right and a wrong side this is the right side together for the moment just for positioning it will be coming down. So I've already popped pins in where that line goes across um, on here for positioning but that's actually the stitching line rather than the positioning line so we do need to just make sure that that's covered with our seam allowance. Um, the lines were conflicting on the pattern piece which is why I've done it that way. So just make sure that that's going to stitch at about a quarter of an inch. We can stitch quarter of an inch in from our edge there and make sure that when you flip that over it's going to sit right and it's long enough at the ends and things like that. So just a few little things to keep an eye on there but nothing that you just can't do. So I'm just going to make sure that sitting that pin is sitting a quarter of an inch in from where I want to sew so I could pop the pin in there now just to make sure it doesn't move again and check this end for the same thing and now I can just use the edge of my fabric as my 
line and do my quarter inch seam all the way along here. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this and then flip it over so that you can see how it sits. Now it wouldn't matter if it's slightly less than quarter of an inch, but about quarter of an inch is pretty good. So now what I want to do is iron that down and then I'm going to do a line of stitching, like a top stitching, pro approximately a, about one eighth of an inch away from the line that we've just stitched and that will just give us a flap that will sit loose and but it will be stitched in in the seams at the end so it will hold it all in place. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this. So that's all looking pretty good. That's going to give us something to clip to, but it'll be held down at the sides. So now we need to do the same thing with the other two pieces here. And again, there's markings on the pattern. There is approximately half an inch between each um, each strip there so you could go ahead and get those done so I'll go on and get those all ready and then we can trim that triangle like we've trimmed for the pocket so that everything's the same size and then we can start making it up so I've gone ahead I've sewn all three of my strips on ready for my little clip holders so and now I'm just going to trim those edges so that everything is nice and level looking pretty good And now we need to make some sort of a loop for it. Now you could use a piece of cord, but I'm going to use a piece of fabric to make my little loop. So I can set this aside now with the pocket one. So with my little strip here, it's only narrow. It's not a very wide loop. And really it's very straightforward. It's just a matter of folding it in half and then folding those raw edges in and doing a line of sewing on it. It's just that it's a little bit narrow. Um, so. It could be wider if you like, but coming out of the point at the top, I felt that anything wider sort of got in the way a little bit of coming out of this little point here. So I think the little narrow one works quite nicely. So I'm just folding those raw edges into the middle there. And then I'll press that over so that the folds are together. And then I'll just do just a single line of stitching is enough just to hold it. Just a little loop. Quite nice to be able to pick up the pincushion with the loop though. already so that's looking pretty good so what we need to do now is start putting these triangles together so we can still leave one to one side because that's for the base and we'll get all the sides done first so if you have a particular preference for which way they go you might want to think about that now I'm just going to not particularly prefer one or the other I'm just going to put two together so I'm going to put these two together first so I've got the pocket lined up and as I said if you wanted to do a little holding uh, line of sewing you could have done that there um, I'm going to stitch the seams here so I'm just going to stitch this one seam to join these two together but I'm going to start and stop about a quarter of an inch in from the point so not right to the edge starting and stopping a quarter of an inch in other than that a regular quarter inch seam including that pocket in that lower segment there Starting a little bit down. And this takes in the edge of the pocket, the edge of the clip. Flaps. And then just remember to stop approximately a quarter of an inch before you get to the end. And if you've got a foot like I've got, you've got little markers on that foot that show you where that quarter inch is. Oops. 
So there we've got that sitting nicely there. We've got a little gap at the ends and then so to sew the next one on I'm going to suggest that we put the loop in place so the loop can come through this little sort of gap here. It just sits out the top there and you can have these little ends sticking up a little bit but we've, we're going to sew this one together in there as well. So at some stage we've got to include the loop so I'm going to stitch this one over here to the pocket first again stopping and starting at that little quarter inch at the same point and then perhaps we'll put the loop in the next seam that might be better so this seam is really just exactly the same as we've done so I might just go ahead starting up here and finishing before I get to the end down there and then show you putting the loop in afterwards so I've got that on there now and now I'm going to put the loop in there's a little bit of a gap in there and we're wanting that loop to sort of come out the very top so you want to probably try and place the loop going straight with that center triangle at the moment and then bring this edge over here it gets a little bit congested in this top area here but I think you'll find that it all works out in the end and we're going to do exactly the same thing we're going to start and stop um, just inside again and at this other end as well so I'll go ahead and we'll sew this one So I've done that seam and I've stopped short the, at the both ends um, but I just want to make sure that this loop is properly secured because we're liable to be picking up our pincushion with the loop so we don't want it flopping out do we? So I'm just going to stitch across that top end there so I'm just sort of pushing a little bit of the triangles out of the way and it's really just to make sure that that loop is secure it's not really doing anything else so stitch there And then I'm just also going to just trim off that little end there because that's quite bulky for us to be trying to fit that inside the top of the triangle when we turn it out the right way, which we're going to do in a little while. Although if you want to have a look and make sure that your loop's sitting all right, now would be the time to have a look at that because now you could adjust it. Other than that, we're ready to put the base in. So because we've stopped and started a little bit before the ends we've got places to stop and start and turn corners and things here so I'm going to suggest that we need to leave a gap in one of the sides so it wouldn't matter if, if it's either the clip side or the plain side but I suggest not in the one with the pocket because that would be hard to hand sew that closed so either one of those sides will be fine because it's just the single thicknesses then so what we need to do, so we might start with this one with the pocket because we know we're stitching all the way along there. We're going to start and stop here. So because we, we did this, uh, left that seam open, and it may be easier to sew it from this side rather than on the inside. And we can start and stop at exactly the same place there, leaving again that little corner, and then that will allow us to open it out to turn it to sew the next side. So we'll go ahead, I'll go ahead and sew this side, and then I'll show you how we do the next side because it's the next side that's probably harder. So we're just starting and stopping at the same place that we started and stopped with the side seams. So I'm suggesting that we do each side separately, it's just that little bit easier to manage. So same thing here, we can start at the same place. And this one here, because we've already sewn this seam here, will just fairly naturally um, come into that point there. So I don't think there's going to be any problem. And then we're going to do this third side and leave a gap in the middle, maybe a couple of inches or so, just so that we've got something to turn everything through. So I think really you can probably do this. It's not hard because of those starting and stopping points. I'll go ahead and do this and show you the next bit. So I've gone ahead, I've done my third seam. I've left a gap for turning. I am just going to clip those corners. Now before you do that, I would just make sure that you haven't got any little um, holes, at, you know, like that your sewing has all met up properly or just go in and adjust that if you need to, especially if you're going to use something like the crushed shell or some sort of granular filling because you don't want things coming out the corners. So, but I am going to clip the corners a little bit so that they're not so bulky when we turn it out. And 
and then we can turn that out the right way. We've got all sorts of things going on in here. There's a loop in there somewhere that's going to come out for the top. There it is. So that's looking pretty good. I'll get my trusty chopstick here to help me. Well, the top comes out quite nicely because you can pull that with the loop. And then just make sure these corners are sitting out uh, nicely so that it's a nice triangle. It's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to put some of the crushed walnut shell in. Now, I think, I think maybe I might put a little bit of um, polyester fiber fill just in the very top because with this one here, it's just sitting a little bit empty, and it's not a problem because in general you don't need to stick pins in there, but if you wanted to, it would be perhaps a good idea uh, just to put something that's going to sort of hold its shape more in the first place. So I've got my fill here, so I'm just going to start putting some of that up in, that, in the top corner first because we're filling from the bottom, it will be the easiest way. So just pushing some of that right up into in there. It's, it's great, you can use combinations of fillings, it doesn't all have to be one or the other. Just maybe one more lot and then I'm going to put the, um, the crushed walnut shell in. Bring this over now. So that's quite nice, it's just that sort of top section and that's the area in this one that was a little bit loose, I felt. Just let that drift into the funnel there. And so I'll go ahead and fill this up, I think. I don't think you need to stop me, watch me doing this all the way through. And I'll just show you how we make sure that it's all okay and sew up the closure. So I've been filling away and I'm just going to push some of this into the one of the corners here. Make sure that it's going into the corners and here, although of course it's not going to stay in that corner while I'm holding it up here. This area here where I put the filling is still nice and soft but we can sort of squidge it around a little bit. But I think there's probably room for just a little bit more in there. We want this to be reasonably full. So that it doesn't collapse. But, but not sort of super tight. It's not anything that's sort of too hard, but reasonably full is good. So I think this will probably be enough now. So that's looking pretty good, I think. So I'll go ahead and just do my little over sew there and come back and show it to you when it's all finished. So I've just finished doing all my stitching along here. So it's looking pretty good. So we can turn it up the right way and I think that is just looking wonderful. So on this side here, I can stick my pins, or I can stick them anywhere I like of course really, and on this side here we can store our clips if we're using clips and things like that, and then in here if you've got a smaller pair of scissors or a packet of uh, needles or anything like that, you could store that in there. So it's kind of like a little whole sewing kit all in one go. So this was the triangle pincushion with spaces for clips and other things, and I hope you've enjoyed that. That was pincushion number eight, and I will see you again with pincushion number nine.